Hey everyone, most of you watching right now aren't actually subscribed to the channel. If you love staying on top of the latest tech trends and exclusive insights, hit that subscribe button right now. It's totally free, takes a second, and it helps us create even better content just for you. So show some support and join the semantic tech community. The Galaxy S25 series is just around the corner and it's going to be powered by Qualcomm's latest and most powerful chip, the Snapdragon 8 Elite. Now we've all heard the buzz about this chipset, it's incredibly powerful, pushing the limits of mobile technology with its insane CPU and GPU performance. Qualcomm has really closed the gap with Apple over the past few years, proving it's a serious contender in both speed and efficiency. But let's be real, with great power often comes great heating. More performance means more energy and more energy can mean heat. So should we be worried about the Galaxy S25 turning into a pocket heater? Well, maybe not as much as you think. Samsung's solution lies in an impressive cooling technology, and today we're breaking down why we're cautiously optimistic about the S25 series thermal management. Samsung has been using big vapor cooling chambers on its flagship devices since 2023. For those not familiar, these chambers are designed to efficiently pull heat away from the chipset and spread it across a larger surface area, keeping the device from overheating even when under heavy load. We've seen these cooling systems on both Samsung's flagship and mid-range devices, and they've been incredibly effective. But here's the challenge with the Snapdragon 8 Elite. Unlike previous chips, it focuses entirely on performance cores, none of those low power efficiency cores we're used to seeing. This chip is a powerhouse designed to deliver maximum performance all the time. Early tests on devices like the Realm GT7 Pro have shown that the Snapdragon 8 Elite can run hot, which is to be expected with this design choice. Qualcomm is really going all in on speed here, and as a result, the chip pushes thermal limits a bit further. Naturally, Galaxy fans are wondering how the S25, S25 Plus, and S25 Ultra will handle this. Will they be able to keep things cool, or are we looking at a potential heat problem? If we look at the recent Galaxy models, Samsung has done a great job in this area. The Galaxy S23 series, for instance, stayed impressively cool under pressure, and the same can be said for the Galaxy A55 in the mid-range market. Samsung's focus on thermal management is clear, and it's likely to continue with the S25 lineup. We're optimistic that Samsung's experience with thermal control, especially with these large vapor cooling systems, will keep the Galaxy S25 series safe from any overheating issues. But hey, this is cutting edge technology, so there's always a bit of risk involved. Let's just say we're cautiously optimistic that Samsung won't disappoint. Now, if you're like me, someone who's always on the lookout for things to nitpick, you might be a little skeptical. But honestly, even I'm hopeful this time, Samsung's track record in recent years has been solid. They've managed to keep their devices from becoming mini toasters, even when pushed to their limits. If they can maintain that level of control with the Snapdragon 8 Elite, then Galaxy S25 owners won't have to worry about burning their hands or draining their battery too quickly. So where does that leave us? With the Galaxy S25 series, Samsung has a tough challenge ahead. But with a top tier cooling solution and a track record of keeping devices running cool, we're betting on a win here. It's still a few months until the official launch, but so far, we're feeling optimistic. Here's hoping Samsung lives up to our expectations and keeps the Galaxy S25 running smooth, fast, and cool. What do you think? Are you excited about the Snapdragon 8 Elite on the Galaxy S25, or do you have some concerns? Drop your thoughts in the comments and make sure to subscribe for all the latest Galaxy S25 updates. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Now let's dive into the exciting showdown between two of the biggest heavyweights in the smartphone world, Apple's iPhone 16 Pro Max and Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra. Both of these phones push the boundaries of mobile technology offering cutting edge features and exceptional performance. But which one takes the crown as the best big phone of 2024? Let's dive in and compare them side by side. Design. Starting with the design, both phones have distinct looks that reflect their brand identities. The iPhone 16 Pro Max stays true to Apple's iconic rectangular shape with flat sides and soft corners. This year, it features an even slimmer bezel, allowing for a larger 6.9-inch display. Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra, on the other hand, keeps its sleek, curved edges and integrates the ever-popular S Pen, a feature unique to Samsung's Ultra series. Size-wise, the differences are minimal. The iPhone 16 Pro Max measures 163 millimeters at 77.6 millimeters, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra is slightly shorter, but a bit wider at 162.3 millimeters x 79 millimeters. That extra width allows room for the S Pen, which gives Samsung an edge in productivity. Apple, however, introduces something new this year, the camera control button, 
a capacitive touch key that allows for zooming and other camera controls with a swipe. When it comes to color options, Apple sticks with its sophisticated muted tones, white, black, natural, and the new desert titanium. Samsung goes for more variety with options like titanium violet and yellow. And for those ordering through Samsung's website, you get access to exclusive colors like titanium blue and green. Display, now, onto the display. Both phones deliver top tier screen technology. The iPhone 16 Pro Max boasts a 6.9 inch LED display with a buttery smooth 120 hertz refresh rate. As with the iPhone 15 Pro series, you also get the always on display feature, which lowers the refresh rate to just one hertz when the phone is idle. Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra isn't far behind with its stunning 6.8 inch LED display that also supports 120 hertz refresh rates and an always on feature. One advantage Samsung brings is an anti-reflective coating, making outdoor visibility much easier in bright sunlight, something the iPhone lacks. Both displays are breathtakingly vibrant, but there are subtle differences in color. The iPhone 16 Pro Max tends to lean towards warmer yellowish tones, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra has a cooler, more tealish hue. A standout feature for the iPhone 16 Pro Max is its ability to drop its brightness to just one nit for easier nighttime viewing, great for late night scrolling. Performance, now let's talk about what's under the hood. The iPhone 16 Pro Max is powered by Apple's latest A18 Pro chip, built on a second generation three nanometer process. This makes it incredibly efficient with significant improvements in heat dissipation and sustained performance compared to its predecessor, the A17 Pro chip. Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra is no slouch either. It runs on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip, custom tuned for Galaxy devices. While the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 performs well, especially in gaming and graphics intensive tasks, it tends to throttle a bit sooner than Apple's 18 Pro under extreme stress. In benchmark tests, the iPhone 16 Pro Max leads in CPU performance, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra takes the edge in 3D graphics, scoring slightly higher in peak performance. However, Apple's new chip excels in long-term sustained performance, so if you're planning on pushing your phone to its limits, the iPhone may have a slight edge. Camera next, let's discuss one of the most critical aspects of any flagship phone, the cameras. The iPhone 16 Pro Max features a 48 megapixel main sensor paired with a new 48 megapixel ultra wide sensor and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens with 5x optical zoom. Apple has also introduced a new lens coating to minimize lens flare, addressing a common complaint in previous models. On the flip side, Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra brings its camera game with a 200 megapixel main camera, a 50 megapixel zoom lens, a 10 megapixel telephoto camera with 3x zoom, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor. Samsung has packed in more megapixels, but remember, megapixels aren't everything. The iPhone tends to produce more natural looking photos, whereas the Galaxy S24 Ultra sometimes leans into oversaturation, delivering more vibrant images. In low light photography, both phones perform exceptionally well but Samsung's larger sensor can capture more detail in some scenarios. For video, the iPhone takes the crown with its 4K recording at 120 frames per second, ideal for capturing stunning slow motion footage. While Samsung's camera app offers tons of customization, Apple's new camera control button provides a more intuitive experience for videographers. Battery life and charging. In terms of battery life, the iPhone 16 Pro Max packs a 4,685 mAh battery while the Galaxy S24 Ultra edges it out with a 5,000 mAh battery. Both phones are more than capable of lasting through a day of heavy use, but Samsung's slightly larger battery may give it a slight advantage. When it comes to charging, Samsung takes the lead. The Galaxy S24 Ultra supports 45 watt wired charging compared to the iPhone's 20 watt charging speed. Samsung also has reverse wireless charging, which allows you to charge other devices like earbuds on the back of your phone, something Apple's iPhone 16 Pro Max doesn't offer. Software. Lastly, let's compare software. Both iOS and One UI are polished, mature operating systems, but they offer different user experiences. The iPhone 16 Pro Max is a fantastic choice. But if you're looking for more customization options, better charging speeds, and love the idea of an S Pen, the Galaxy S24 Ultra might be the perfect phone for you. Ultimately, both of these phones are top tier devices with a ton to offer. Whichever one you choose, you're getting a powerful, feature-packed smartphone that will keep you ahead of the curve in 2024.